Thank you so much for that, uh, Dominique. Now, um, what advice would you give to an aspiring musician who would, or would like rather to dabble in the reggae industry, but also just wanting to be independent? I'd start with you, Dominique. So like what I'm doing right now, it's more than just music. I'm hoping to get to a place and my purpose is to literally shed light on a lot of negative things that's happening back home. So you have to, you have to really, really stay focused. And I know it's hard and patience is very important. And for yourself, pressure? Yeah, um, upcoming artists, I, I usually would tell them to just, you know, be yourself, be unique, you know what I mean? Um, we always, people always wanna hear something new, you know? I, when I started to do music, I could remember back in, in 1999, 2000, all my friends would be like, yo, you sound like Sizzler. You sound like Sizzler, you sound like Capleton. You sound like Jamie, you, sound, you, sound, you know what I mean? And I had to find myself, you know, within the whole midst of it. And I did, was kinda, I, I could honestly say I was kinda living in my, my inspirations Meds, you know what I mean? And yeah, I had to find myself. And I think, I think love and affection, that song kind of helped me to find myself. And not just as a lover's rock artist, but like direction, you know what I mean? And you know, um, the way I sing music different from them, I would make it my duty to know that I'm not going to do this song the way they would do this song. You know, because I would do that. I would be like, yo, Capleton, if Capleton was on this track, how oh, Capleton would have gone? I would just, hur, 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 you know? And then we just do it that way. And then when the song come out, they say, yo, it bad in the boy, you sound like Capleton. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So in the midst of it all, I had to find myself, you know what I mean? And I realized, like, it was nothing better than being myself. You know, the minute I found myself and found my niche, it was, it was up from there, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, just don't take no for an answer, bro. Like, you know, like enough people gonna have doubt in, in, in what you're doing and it's not everybody's gonna like what you're doing, you know? And when Jack give you the vision, it's you, him give the vision, you know? him never give them. So you can't expect everybody to understand what you have to do. Jack tell you, when Jack tell you, None of them was there. You know what I mean? Like my Benjamin Van Benjamin again had a song called Carl Ja and the Blood Cell Phone. Yeah. When Ja called him and his blood cell phone, because this is a meditation. Like when he got the inspiration from Ja, it was him. And his music wasn't liked by everybody. You know? I myself, I couldn't stand to listen to all of his music. There was some of it that really captivated me. And this is my brother. I would be at all of his performances and I'm in the crowd. But, you know, some of the songs them, I'll be in the crowd and I'll be falling asleep. Because it just, to, 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 it just very slow, but to him, do not touch the, the, the tempo. Left it right there, so don't touch it. So I had to like learn that, this is a frequency. It's not just about just dancing and bop, bop, bop. This is a frequency. You know what I mean? And is you have to tap into the frequency. And he was being himself. There's nobody in the world that sound like Vaughn. Nobody can try for even deliver the message the way Vaughn deliver message. It's an angelic way he did his thing. But you see, when God give you a blessing and God give you a talent, no man can take it from you, you know. You see me, I say, so what I did, I said, all right. Oh, you feel like Jamaica is with my life there. And that's the ending of my... So I go back to St. Thomas and I link up with my own Virgin Tippy, And we sing Virgin Islands Nice. And we do Show Love. And we do The Rain. And we sing some big song. Then me and Vaughn start connect. After all is said and all is done. See him I want See him world reaction to hate and to love. See him I want 
Make them see it when the lion heart did fly up in a dub. Seeking balance. See am I a one. So now me and Vaughn start connect and start make music. And it's a different. The world get to see a different side of pressure. You know, they get to really see the rootical side of pressure. You know, some different side. It wasn't just the, let me give you. It was roots and ragamuffin music. Let me, you know what I mean? And that now shake them up because they must say, wait, our pressure is still a bonfire. No, yeah, I have to call you. Never give me the talent. You know. I just give it to me. And just tell me this. I forgot to do. Just say, listen, go back to where you come from and go link with some of them youth down there. That's where the work they know, and that's where it end up happening. You I, know? I want, I want to, uh, sorry to cut you. I want to ask you about the, the first time I heard, the Virgin Island Nice. I was, I was in Europe. Like, I've, I, before that I was in Virgin Islands two, three times, and the song, let's say, is about three minutes and a half. That song educated me more about Virgin Islands than. History, yeah. the boxer mm -hmm. you were talking about, all the things. Yeah, man. What was the inspiration behind all of that? And I'm sorry to take your job. Well, that song in particular was meant to be a historical song. When I heard the track, like, first, as I heard the track, I'm singing, so nice, so nice. I didn't have no lyrics, but this just keep ringing in my head all the while, you know what I mean? So, me and Tippy did say, you know something, instead of talking about just how the Virgin Islands nice, we have nice pretty beach and them things, let's talk about the people that paved the way for make the place nice. What is the important, how was that so important for you to talk about? Why was it so important? Because this is unforgetting knowledge. Yeah. We have teachers from the Virgin Islands that have inspired Marcus Garvey. You understand? Let me talk about Edward Wilmot Blyden, who is a Pan-Africanist before Marcus Garvey, that in Marcus Garvey spoke about him in his books as one of his teachers. These are our leaders from the Virgin Islands that have inspired so many African culture throughout the Americas. I'm talking about Caspar Holstein, you know what I mean? Like big, during the, 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 the Black Wall Street, we have people from the Virgin Islands that played major part in the black movement in America. You know, then we have Queen Mary, who is a slave that burned down the whole of Frederickstead to get, to, to get the, the slave masters them to pay more to the slaves because they were underpaid. So they all gathered. And so when it comes to the Virgin Islands, it have a history that has never been told internationally. You know what I mean? So now, like, like, like we just talked about, being, having the, 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 the message, the, the vibe to speak the message, you know, given the opportunity to say these things, I felt like it was given to me to say these things. You know what I mean? It wasn't given to nobody else. Because even for Vaughn Benjamin now, Vaughn, Vaughn would really get into the hieroglyphics and the scientific part about where we are in creation and how we got here. And I'm like, just on the surface, like these are the people who paved the way. And Edward Wilmot Blyden is an educator who spoke about Africa and teaching us in the Virgin Islands and throughout the Caribbean about Africa and looking to Africa for, for, for our, you know, our true inheritance, you know? So now growing up, young Marcus Garvey listening to the teachings of Edward Wilmot Blyden, you know, and inspired him with the movement, not Edward Wilmot Blyden alone, but he played a major part in Marcus Garvey's life to want to be able to be a revolutionary and talk these things. For us to know about Marcus Garvey and for us to know about Eile Selassie, you know? So the song itself, it, 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 it took us like three days four days, I myself had to do some research on my own ancestors to, to make sure I get the, the message right here, man. And it came out very well. You know, the people really accepted the song as, as their anthem, unofficial. And you know, we have a Virgin Islands anthem. Everywhere has an anthem, but we have like a, sounds like a Navy band <laughs> kind of anthem, you know? 
And that song has been the unofficial anthem of the Virgin Islands. It has been used to promote the Virgin Islands internationally, commercially, you know. So, you know, it, it, that song again changed my life on a whole different thing. But this is me now doing this from the Virgin Islands and not saying like I have to go through Jamaica for get this done. You know what I mean? Because my whole thing about life is like, if 10 people tell me, say, yo, you're not gonna make it work if you don't go down, they go do it, you know. I is that you to be like, I bet you not. I bet you I get it done over here. You want bet? We gonna get it done over here. It might not be the way you think it gonna come out, but we gonna get it done over here. That's me. I always want to defeat the ads. You know what I mean? Because inspiration again. You get the inspiration to do something. Who can go against that? Where's the inspiration coming from? It's coming from a greater source than I and I. So it must be a purpose that I'm inspired to do this work. You know what I mean? So yeah, definitely, definitely. More blessings. Dominique? Um, do you have another question for yeah, him? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Let's just carry on, and then we can get back to the questioning. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, so collaboration is often key to the music industry. Now, can you tell us uh, if maybe there were any meaningful collaborations that you've had in the past and that have had a meaningful impact in your musical journey? Um, I've, I've collaborated with lots of artists, you know, the most meaningful collaborations has to be my bridging Van Benjamin, you know, because we work in the studio together on music together. Versus like I have a song and we call Sizzle and say, yo, we need a verse on this. You know what I mean? And we say, Anthony B, we need a verse on this. It's, it's more like we actually working together. Like Van would be like, okay, I'm going to start this song and you start the next song, you know? So we just know like we work like that. So. It was always a meaningful vibes. And I've been working with Vaughn before Love and Affection, you know, and in the Virgin Islands, amongst the artists, because I'm from St. Thomas, Vaughn is from St. Croix. So St. Croix is where most of the, the VI reggae artists come from. I'm one of the only from St. Thomas, wow. right? There's a couple more, but St. Croix is where most of you have the Desiree, the Ras Attitude, the Batch, the Van, the Van, you know, enough, enough artists, right? So me coming from St. Thomas, this is the next thing too, me coming from St. Thomas and Van showing me the love never goes so easy with everybody, you know what I mean? Because here it is now, we over here with Van, Van is performing, he's doing these shows, but he never calls us on stage to perform with him. But he's bringing pressure from St. Thomas, and he's performing with us on stage. So these are little things I had to go through from St. Thomas, St. Croix. Because, you know, we still have them little indifferences, too. We have little food wars, like, oh, St. Croix food is better than St. Thomas. Or, yeah, we have all them little stuff I go on amongst the people, you know? So even with the music, so me linking with Vaughn, right? Vaughn take me in as a brother. And what I live to see is even when I took my route and I went to Jamaica to start working with Dan Carleone, Van never stopped believing in the music. And then for the first time, we met up on the road in France. We were both booked for the same festival. So now we're at the festival and his tent is rammed with people. Like fans just want to meet him, right? And I'm with Van. Alien, Munga, we don't have that kind of traffic in our tent, right? So I'm like, Van, I'm like, yo, Dan, you have, make me go over there, go link Van. If, if you do have any of the albums, you would see like Pressure Bus Pipe was even the, the only artist he was working with from, from them time there, you know what I mean? And then in his elder age, start to work with Protege and start to work with different artists, do music with Janine. Each one teach a one, you know? Each one teach a one and, and it's just so the thing go, you know? I love music, period. I love when the youth them take it serious, you know? Anytime a youth come to me and start talking about 
he want to be a big star and he did I don't pay them no mind you know because I want to see the work you can't tell me that and I don't see no work you don't have no song written you don't have a record for me have you ever recorded a song before I'm not saying that everybody have these privileges but you can't tell you know when a man see the Rolls Royce and him see all of that before the work you know as a man start come to me and start talking about oh yo if I have this and my body no and yo me me want to hear that. Me don't want to hear that. Because you have some youth that really about it and them really taking it serious. You know? And them is the youth I want to hear about. You know? The youth them that in on the blocks. They in the studios writing. You know? Song after song after song. And taking that serious. I love that. You know? Because that's what it takes. To become somebody. You have to work. Nothing not going to be given to you. Nothing. You have to get up and want it for yourself. And when, and you say a good thing too, you can't be getting ready. You, know? you have to be ready. When nobody not pay you no know, attention, that is the time to be getting ready. The minute a producer, you see a producer, you say, rascal, a dynamic, that, you know. But I forgot to sing. You can't go chip up on your lyrics, them, and you don't have a thing together. And then I say, no, nah, man. And then the next time when him see you again, you done left a thing in your brain because the first time yeah. him gave the blind, you never do so good. And it have a million youth we want the same opportunity too. Hungry. Hungry. You know what I mean? So getting ready, minute two, you're not getting ready. Yeah. Be ready. You know? All times. Always be ready for the thing, for the journey. You know? Like all the man them ready. Like all we ready for Saturday. You know what I mean? That's what we I mean? the you see how it is the closest friend. No, you never can be the worst. No, 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 all the way from the U.S. Virgin Isles. It's pressure bus pipe. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Dynamic sound, international, the big sound. Pressure in the city. Yeah, my people be free and the world is yes, and they control of their life, of course. Can't be held down by no evil force. Who the most timeless, no wizard can curse. And it is the feed and the world is yes, and they control of their Life, of course, can't be held down by no evil force. Dynamic sound, yo, 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 yo. Hey, we told the job created. Why can't we just leave as one? There's food and clothes and shelter for ganja not to spread to every woman. With the loyalty and humbleness, dynamic in every day earth. From a boy, this can genetic and Sudanese child, they must go bank on the death. Tell them be free and the world is and they control of your life, of course. Big up the black woman on the earth. Rastafari. Side, yeah. Ethiopia is like the VI. 
Nothing can destroy black people worldwide well Even though we're just a few square miles Bermuda is a place with the African style, yeah A lot of people still going through strife Jamaica full of African pride Black people, you're nice, so nice And the African nice, so nice To each his own, every man Every man have to um, sit on his own tub, you know. Um, I grew up in a Christian family, you know. Um, my grandmother was very much into Christianity. And I found Rastafari um, in my teenage years, you know. So I would say most of my life I grew up as a Rasta man. And being a Rastafarian in reggae music, it means a lot to me because that's who I am, you know. Off the record and on record, I'm, I still have to represent Rastafari, you know. Um, entertainment, entertainment and one's fate is, can be separated easily, you know. Because when a one decides he wants to do music, he wants to be an entertainer, you know? Some people only do one kind of music, or some people might be gospel singers, you know? Um, and other people are just artists, regardless of their personal faith. That's something they, um, they practice when they go to their house and when they are around other people. But when it comes to the music, it's whatever the people like and what the people love and what they want to hear. So it's like a business for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Um, for me, Rastafari has always been in my surroundings within the music because I had people, who, the people I was surrounding myself with were Rastafarians who were doing reggae music, especially like my brother Vaughn Benjamin. Like I would spend a lot of time around him and him just always referring to the Bible and scriptures and, and, and certain books that he read, he always kept me in a mind space of even when he's not around, I'm thinking about him when I'm recording my music. I'm like, I wonder if he's going to like this, you know, if, if, if this is going to be up to the standards because I know what he, this, the expectations he have of me. And I know the expectations I have of myself. You know what I mean? So I could only speak for myself, you know, when it comes to music and Rastafari, you know. I try my best to keep it clean for all ones to understand the message, you know. And there are certain times that I hail his majesty and I glorify his majesty in music. And sometimes I don't because it's not just about the gospel. It's about getting to the raw truth of the reality of what people face in the community. So I might leave out the Rastafari and leave out the Haile Selassie just to get the message across to a larger massive, you know. And if I'm directing the music to a certain audience, then I know how to, to, to do that, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's like Rastafari for me is my faith, and this is who I am. But when it comes to pleasing the massive and being an entertainer for the world, you know, I still have to represent and respect myself as well, but I have to branch off and have different topics, sing about different things for, to show the versatility of myself as well as an entertainer. You know what I mean? I hope I'm answering the question correctly. You know what I mean? To, to, to the best of my ability. So, yeah, it's to each his own, you know. Um, some people just about the business and just about getting a song out even with the locks on their head, you know. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of artists, I could tell you this. When I first went to Jamaica, there were artists who were only singing about Rastafari music because it was popular. And as soon as you know what I mean? They, 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 the dance hall start take over. They're dance hall artists now. It's like you don't hear nothing about Haile Selassie. None at all. You just hear about, 
you know, and I've seen that over and over, you know, and I don't judge no one because I don't, I only have one mind, one vision. I can't vision for your next man, you know what I mean? So I just do what I feel I'm told to do and, and just obedient to the forces there is, you know what I mean? I can't speak for everybody else, but one thing I know for sure is that what is to be will be, you know? Every man after go sit down on his own bottom. Every, everyone after go face their own struggles, their own judgment, their own glory. Every man after go through it, you know. So, yeah, but we give thanks because you know we understand that there are people out in the world who don't really know the ins and outs of artists. I don't know for some reason people think like you know like we just separate ourselves from the world and it's just our music out there and we don't enter society, you know. Like, I go to the supermarket myself. I pump my own gas, you know what I mean? Like, my mother still cooks food for me, you know what I mean? Like, I'm traditional, like, I don't need, I don't like the celebrity lifestyle. You know, I, that's, uh, that's not who... Pressure bus pipe is, you know what I mean? In my community, I am everywhere. Like people see me all over. And they pass me straight, they say hi, however it is, but those are my people. That's my community. And I feel comfortable amongst them because they saw my struggle. They saw when I was nothing, they saw where I came. You know what I mean? And so I'm truly grateful for all of that. So just that in itself keeps me grounded with the people, you know? And don't get myself too ahead of myself because I'm on TV, I'm in South Africa, you know? Yeah, it's always keeping myself grounded and knowing that, you know, there's a bigger work to be done, you know? Most I bless. Rastafari. All right. I believe we have another question. No, your name today, my brethren. It's, a, it's a, a South African name, so you know we in South Africa, it's either we are Zulu or Sotho, you see. What about the rest? <laughs> uh, not, not, not to say others I don't count, but most of the language here in Soweto, we talk Zulu, eh? Yeah, so your name today, my brother, will be Bongani, you see. Yeah. Give thanks. Blessed. We are welcome, my brother. In Africa, blessed. Uh, you see, Bongani, my brother, <laughs> meaning uh, we give thanks for your coming, you know? Blessings. Yeah, man, give thanks. More blessings, blessings sir. Majesty love. Royal greetings to you, um, King Bas Piper. Royal greetings to everyone um, on the podium. Thank you so much for coming all the way. Everyone on the podium comes from, doesn't come from Soweto. So welcome to Soweto. Thank you. Bless up. Siabonga. Siabonga. So we welcome the name Bongani. <laughs> Blessed. Um, my question is for um, King Dynamic. Dynamic. Um, what inspired your name? Um, although you know dynamic, obviously, but uh, just when I hear from you, uh, and also um, you've got so much, so many dub plates. Please share the secret how you get them. <laughs> and also um, for King Pressure, um, I would like to know if you have um, any plans of uh, repatriating to Africa. Give thanks. Yeah, uh, check. Yes, thank you for those questions. I I got the name Dynamic because uh, growing up I was a very good football player. So I was an attacking midfielder and my passes were supposedly dynamic. And that's how I got the name. And my cousin, you know, gave me that name and it's just stuck with me since then. And then the other questions about the dub plates is, uh, man, it's so many... So much money spent, but it's worth it, you know, 
and you just have to be very smart. It's not every doublet that you need. You just have to get the one that's specifically gonna get the job done. You know, and then also you have to get a doublet that represents you. You know, like where the the song, uh, the Virgin Island song he did, I try to turn that around to represent Africa. You know, and you have to be with, I, I like the fact that you guys were dancing along to the dub plays, even though they were dub plays meant to kill sounds. But you know, I like to, I follow sounds like Stone Love. You know, they have dub plates as killer dubs, but you can actually rock to it. And also our good brother here, he looks so humble, but has a Adonai sound. And I was telling him, it's one of the sounds that I really look up to. They had a, it's 2000, right? 2000 when they work with VP Records and Reggae Gold. That mixtape they did literally changed the whole industry. You know, you might just sit here looking simple, but this is somebody that the sound system world has done a big, you know? And when you, when you, when you hear all these DJs playing sound effects, these are the guys that started it. And, and they did it the right way, you know? When you listen to Morgan Heritage Down by the River, these are the first people that played it. You know, in Psalms 23, Graham Smogan and Buju Bantan, they, they had a vision, a business vision for the, for the sound system culture that, you know, DJs themselves can also go on tour. You know, I'm on tour literally because of the works that they put in and, you know, as a DJ, not only as a reggae DJ, and I appreciate that. And yeah, you know, just, you just gotta be smart and make your moves. It's like playing a chess. You know, think before you make a move and make sure when you make that move and you fail, you can have something to back, you know, to, you know, but be a basketball, bounce back always. And trust me, I've, I don't think anybody has failed more than me. I have failed a zillion times, but I've never gave up, you know, and I'm still going and going and going. And thank you so much. Repatriation is a thing that is better said than done, you know? It is easier said than done, you know what I mean? But I'm definitely, I've been on Google looking at properties and, and stuff. Yeah. Like just checking different areas in, in Soweto and South Africa and, you know, it seems, it seems that, that I, I, I would be able to get a gates, you know? Yeah, at least that I could be able to make travels to South Africa. But um to be just permanent, you know, it's it's a big move, you know, because as you know, like I said, repatriation is easier said than done because, you know, we have a lot of loved ones, you know, that our mothers, our fathers, our children, our aunts, our uncles, you know, just to just like, ask yourself, would you just leave South Africa, leave all that you love behind, and move to America? You know? Like, uh, uh, I mean, anywhere in the world. Just left all that you love. Your children, your mother, your father, your uncles, your pets, everything, and just leave them all behind to follow the dream of, you know, where you want to be selfishly, you know? So having a place in South Africa is very easy. And, and I think that's something will happen in the near future. You know, a place that I could come and, and, and you know, link with the people in South Africa and who will have I've spent a month in South Africa, you know? And I think that is more easier to get done, you know, than to say I'm permanently going to be a resident of South Africa. That, that, that is something that I would love to see. Full repatriation, you know what I mean? And, and for me to be able to say, yo, mommy, everybody pack your things, let's go, we're going back to Africa. Yeah. And if I could get every one of them to agree, then yeah, repatriation is gonna be a lot easier. You know what I mean? But to just, for myself, you know what I mean? It would be selfish, you know, for me to forget where I come from, even though my roots is Africa, 
you know, I was still born amongst a, in a village of people that, that raised me, you know, and cared for me and brought me to this point, you know, for me to be able to bring myself to Africa and show the world I'm still a child of Africa. You understand? So, yeah, being on the continent more often is definitely in the plants, you know? And you see in my face in South Africa, definitely. Connecting with the people, making more bridgings and sisterings and stuff like that. That would all make it more easier. You know, you come to the Virgin Islands. You're welcome. You know? Come and visit your African brothers on that side. And, and if they see, and if they see that you guys are really living clean and nice, maybe they might be like, ooh, no, I'm an African man, go, man. You know what? I can't wait to go back and show them pictures of South Africa. Because that is what has been blinding black people in the Western Hemisphere for a long time. You know? You know, they just feel like we don't have cars and, and people don't have shoes. And, you know, like... Like still, you, you don't feel like we're civilized people. And I live in Atlanta, Georgia, you know? I, I don't know, he, he lives in Georgia too. I might be speaking for myself, but South Africa is way further ahead than Atlanta, Georgia. Like civilization, I'm talking about the, the, the way the, the place look, the cleanliness in the place is, trust me, Africa is where the spotlight is right now. You know what I mean? Africa, the spotlight is on Africa on a whole. You know what I mean? People are coming back home. You know, it doesn't matter if it's South Africa, Ghana. People are traveling back to Africa. And that's what the media is not talking about. You know what I mean? But now I'm going to tell you about that. And see how people are really making their moves back to Africa. And it's really cheaper to move back to Africa, yeah. you know? Like, and that's what's like, like, I have to get a place in Africa, <laughs> you know? Yeah, because it makes sense. It makes sense. And then I get to meet my new sisters and brothers and communicate and a whole new world of love and, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm yeah, I'm all for the village. I'm, I, I'm so very interested in knowing about Juan Benjamin and um, how he was, his aura, you know, his fundamental teachings to you as you were the youth at that time, you know, what were his, like his principles, his morals, and how he sees youth um, maybe in the future that they must be so how or this how as artists as us as well that we never had a chance to even maybe cite him as we citing you but we were always reading about his works and then and then his, his music and then his you know a, 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 not so much that we get from the media not so much that we get from the Google or any Facebooks and things. Some are, some other things they get hidden from us. Even his death, you know, we don't know about that. Personally, as an artist, I don't know about that, you know. So please, my king, if you can just brief me up a bit of, you know, blessed love. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I was actually interested in that question as well, the one I asked you, but I'm gonna keep it. Uh, short i've never i've never really looked at it as blowing i'm just looking at it as an opportunity given to me and i seized it you know because you know you guys might just see this but trust me there's way more bigger sound systems than dynamic there's the mighty crowns who are like the anniversary they do at a big national stadium you know and there's bigger sounds out there but i've 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 always I remember when I, when I used to live in Kansas City. You know, Kansas City is in the Midwest of America, and most of the reggae shows that come there don't really get a lot of turnouts. So and it would be like the pit stop for artists. That's where they go and rest for during the tours. You know, he will tell you, weekend shows are the best shows. The weekday shows are just something they pick on the road. And the Kansas City around there, uh, I, I met with a 
Tony Rebel. He, he was doing a show with a, a Queen Africa. And the show was okay. You know, we spent a lot of time. We spoke. And, and I gave him the idea. I said, hey, you know, what do you think about hosting a sound clash at Rebel Salute? You know, and this is three years before me getting on Rebel Salute. So, but I still realized I had to put in the work. And I went and did the U.S. Rumble, where I represented USA, and I went to the World Clash. World Clash is the the World Cup of Sound Clash, like you know the World the World Cup you guys hosted here a couple of years ago. So when I went there, I took second place, and I I did another World Clash in. Oh, thank you. I did another. I did another. The second World Clash I did in uh in UK. I took second place again. I've always came short. <laughs> I always came short because of they they flipped the script on me towards the end and they had the crowd it would be Africa versus Jamaica. But I figured it out. So I beat them to it, you know? Because they always used to say I live in America, I'm not even an African. And you know, it's about convincing the crowd to, to go against whoever I'm clashing. And I used to fall for that. Until one day I said, you know what, no. You also live in America, you know? So how come you as a Jamaican living in America, you can say you're Jamaican, and me as an African living in America, I can't say Africa. And now, after that, it was just, you know? And then when I really realized that, I'm, I'm doing, I got a call from Damien Marley's management to go to Welcome to Jamrock Reggae Cruise. And after the Reggae Cruise, again, I took second place. I don't know what's going on with that. But I got a, a one morning around six in the morning, I got a phone call from Damien Marley. And he was all energetic. I thought I was dreaming. You know, we were speaking. And the first question he asked me, like, hey, man, what and it's Damien. I'm thinking I'm gonna get the Jamaican accent and whatnot. He was actually kind of speaking like an American, and I I thought it was a joke. But he started asking me why I was interested in the sound in the sound clash and whatnot. So I told him my journey, and I mentioned sounds like King Jammies. Those are sound systems in Jamaica that uh, hosted their own events and build rhythms for artists and produce. And that's the lane I want to go into. You know, when you see sound system like those, when they when they actually play, they'll play the first uh, part of the record and then they'll flip it around, which is the instrumental, and have artists come and sing all over it. And that's what I wanted to bring to Africa. I don't think we as African have experienced the sound system. And when I told him that, he told me I was in the right direction. And getting off the phone, I sat there for like 30 minutes and I said, you know what? If I can be on the phone with them and I think I made it, that moment right there is when I thought I made it. <laughs> um, I think it's over to you, Prisha, and then we're just gonna wrap up the session because time is against us, unfortunately. I can see we still have a few hands, but yeah, I'm gonna have to apologize, guys. We're gonna let Prisha answer this one and then we're just gonna have to wrap up, okay? Thank you. Um, so he was asking me about Vaughn Benjamin. Um, wow. What do you want to hear about, the human side or the spiritual side? What, like, man. Okay, so Vaughn was a human being. Let me say that first, right? Because <laughs> a lot of people think like he he's in the heavens and he, you know? But he's... Van is, is the singer, and then his brother, Rani, is the bass player, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Van, for me, I have so much memories of Van, I don't know where to begin, but I must say that Van was very serious about the music. Like, the music was his life, you know what I mean? Like, he put, he basically was married to the music. Like, everything was for him getting the message out to the people, and it doesn't matter how... And I used to laugh a lot because Vaughn felt like he doesn't make mistakes, right? 
Vaughn goes in the studio, he records something. Me, I'm going to take that back. I need to do that over again. Vaughn is like, no, that's not a mistake. I saw Jack set it. So, left it. So, you would hear so much songs from him and you'd like, what did he say? Like, like what is he saying there? And I don't understand right there. So, but Vaughn, don't take back nothing. When Vaughn recording, Vaughn does record from top to bottom as if he's reading something out. You understand? He writes his lyrics out on a paper and he just read the lyrics out while finding melodies. With the, he's just special, very, very unique. I've never seen it. He, there's, there, he's not, he's not like, what, what I want to say is like, he's not like program. Like even when he's writing his lyrics, he writes against the lines and not on the lines. So he turns the paper around and he writes his lyrics against the lines. I never ask him nothing because when I'm writing my lyrics, I write it on the line. I could see my lyrics better. I could, it, it makes more sense to me, right, to write it on the line. Vaughn is like, mm -mm. he just turn the paper the other way and write the lyrics themselves. And I don't question everything. The kind of energy Vaughn was, he, left, he never left you to question nothing. You just had to just humble and just exist around Van because he never spoke much about his personal self. He always spoke about others and what he can do to, to help this and what he needs to finish. Or it was always about the work. He would never in like talk about himself and glorify himself. Never ever, ever hear Van do that. You know what I mean? And I could say so much, even about us just laughing about. Vaughn is a comedian to you. May I tell you this? Like, Vaughn loves to laugh. Like, you might see him and he's always serious. But trust me, like I was telling somebody earlier, like, sometimes you're not comfortable around the world. Vaughn was very shy, too. Like, he didn't like taking pictures. That's why none of his albums have a picture of him on it. You understand? You might have a picture of him, like maybe you might find a couple pictures of him for a single or something like that. I think later on in his ages, he started to free up with people and started to do interview. Vaughn never do no interview in the early days. He don't take picture. He don't, he don't care to be seen. He just wants you to know and understand the music. Like, love the music. You don't have to see me ever. Just hear my voice. And quick every time you hear my voice. And so he used to meditate. His art, the artwork they would use for his album covers one artist for years, many years. Paint different art. And Vaughn would just have him painting, an actual painter. And then they would make it digital for his album covers. He was very, very special. Um, love smoke herb. You know what I mean? Like, Real ganja man, like when you go around van, it's like if you don't have, he give you herb, you know what I mean? But you're always giving him her because it's like, you know, you just the greetings every time van, hold this, you know what I mean? Just show you I'm a teacher, you know what I mean? And so much, so much. But angel, angel in living flesh, you know, worthy to be praised, yeah, worthy to be glorified. You know, he is one of a kind, you know, definitely one of a kind, Bridget. All right. Thank you so much, Pressure, for that. And thank you to you guys for coming in today, for pulling through and, you know, just for hanging out uh, with us. And also thanks uh, so much to Lioness Production for bringing us here and bringing us together for us to have this true um, conversation, for us to sit down, for us to learn, for us to get a chance to know each other and just to know a bit more about our industries. Yeah, more blessings, everyone. Oli Manuelai. Celestia, Ja Rastafari. Yo, a dynamic, yo, a dynamic sound.
You could be living this minute The next minute you're gone away Hold up your heads, my brothers Be conscious, my sisters And by your works you shall surely be paid 